Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. And thank you so much for joining me for today's live broadcast from Amtrak Vacations on Round Trip Rail Vacations, everything you need to know. Uh, thank you so much again for joining me today, folks. Uh, I can still see that we've got quite a few folks uh, who are still getting logged in. Uh, of course, we're right on three o'clock now, so I'm just gonna give it just a few seconds to let everybody get logged in and settled in uh, for today's presentation. Perfect. So if you are just joining us, thank you again for uh, taking the time today to attend this live presentation on Round Trip Rail Vacations. My name is Colleen McCarthy, and I've had the very good fortune to be working with Amtrak Vacations for almost eight years now. Uh, and I've been very lucky to have been out on a lot of the different routes and to many of the different destinations that we are going to speak about today in today's presentation. Um, so before we get started, I just want to point out uh, that we have some excellent handouts for you, which you can download at any time throughout the presentation. Uh, you should see them on your screen there. Uh, it says handouts too. Um, you just need to click on them and you can download them. There's some great information there on the train and some of our special offers and things like that. Uh, and as well, please feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation. Uh, so I will be addressing questions towards the end of today's broadcast, um, but please do type questions throughout the entire presentation and I will come to them at the end. Uh, I know from experience, we usually have a lot of questions. It's one of my favorite parts, getting to interact with you folks. Um, so if I don't have a chance to get to your question on today's broadcast, we will make sure that somebody from the team does reach out to you to send you that answer uh, to those questions. Uh, so definitely type away any questions you might have about the trips that we're featuring, uh, any destinations that are not featured today, or any questions that you might have whatsoever. I'll go ahead and type them away. I will get to as many as I can. And if, again, if I don't have a chance to get to yours on the live broadcast, we'll make sure to send that information along to you so that you do get those answers that you need. Uh, so here's our family of brands. So Amtrak Vacation does have a couple great sister companies. If you folks are interested, not only in the US, but also travel uh, out to Europe, Australia, South Africa, anywhere like that, uh, certainly let us know. We can accommodate that for you. Uh, but today's presentation is about Amtrak Vacations, uh, specifically about round trip rail vacations here with Amtrak Vacations. Uh, if you've been on any of these broadcasts before, you'll know that we do typically start out the presentation by showing you folks the Amtrak systems map. Um, and I don't mean to be repetitive, but there's a great reason for that. And I just think it really does a great job of highlighting uh, for anyone who's unfamiliar with Amtrak, and even for those of you who've ridden before, uh, just how extensive the Amtrak network is. Uh, as you folks can see here, it does touch 46 out of the 48 continuous United States. There are over 500 Amtrak stations in the USA and up on into Canada. And as you can see, there's multiple routes here on the West Coast, the East Coast, and pretty much everywhere in the middle. Uh, so today's theme is round trip rail vacations. Uh, now, as I go through the featured uh, vacations, you will see that a lot of them start from major cities like Chicago uh, or Los Angeles. But I do want you to keep in mind throughout the presentation that we can customize any of these trips uh, to start you off in your hometown. So you don't have to start in Chicago. If you live somewhere else along the route, you know, Omaha, Kansas City, St. Louis, anything like that, we can certainly start you out in your station closer to home and get you on the Amtrak route and get you out to some of these amazing national parks and other destinations. Uh, sometimes if you do live in a smaller town, we might connect you through a bigger station, but we make that simple and easy, which we'll talk about a little bit later on uh, in the presentation. Now, if you are interested in an Amtrak vacation, uh, I do want to just highlight a few of the things that make us a little bit different. Uh, so Amtrak is not about just the transportation, right? It's not about getting from point A to point B as fast as possible. Uh, in most cases, it's not the fastest way to get there, but it is all about that amazing experience. You know, traveling with Amtrak, it, it truly is about the journey as well as about the destination. You get to see some amazing parts of this country by train that you really would never be able to see any other way. 
Uh, you meet some amazing people on your journey. You get some great food in a lot of cases. Um, get that experience potentially of doing it overnight aboard the rails, you know, sleeping in your own little private cabin, getting rocked to sleep by the motion of the train and waking up somewhere entirely new. Uh, so with Amtrak Vacations, it is a bucket list experience. We do hear that a lot from our travelers. It's something that they've thought about and dreamed about and been planning, you know, for a long time. Amtrak Vacations also offers a ton of freedom and flexibility. So in most cases, uh, these trains have daily departures, sometimes even multiple times per day. So you can plan a trip whenever suits you. Uh, this summer, this fall, even this winter, there's some great uh, you know, destinations to travel uh, in the wintertime uh, or even next year as well. Amtrak Vacations is really a hassle-free <laughs> style vacation. It's a lot more relaxed uh, than your typical vacation. You do not need to show up at the Amtrak station three plus hours early like you do when you take a flight. Uh, you are not you know, nearly in the same kind of crowds at the Amtrak stations or on the Amtrak trains as you are uh, in an airport or on an airplane. Uh, you can bring a generous amount of luggage. We'll touch on that a little bit later on, but the luggage requirements are quite generous. You can bring a normal sized bottle of shampoo, <laughs> uh, which I find to be really helpful. Uh, you can keep your shoes on in the station, you know, all of that. It, it's really a much more comfortable and relaxed experience from start to finish here if you do a round trip vacation with Amtrak Vacations. Now, Amtrak Vacations is the official tour operator for Amtrak, so we are their direct partner to put together these vacation trips for them. Uh, and that's great news for you folks because it allows us to give you some really fantastic discounts uh, for these vacations. And as well, it allows us a unique advantage to book up to two years in advance. Uh, so you may know if you've looked at train tickets that you can only go out about 11 months. But if you are planning an Amtrak vacation, maybe you've got a special anniversary coming up in you know, 18 months or something like that, um, you can certainly start planning that now uh, because we can book, we like to say, from tomorrow all the way till two years from tomorrow with Amtrak vacations. So we are booking all the way out to the spring of 2022 right now. Uh, so do keep that in mind if you do have any kind of special occasion that you're planning for coming up in the next year or so. Also with Amtrak, we offer city to city service. And what that means is the Amtrak stations in most cities and even some of our national parks are actually located right in the center of the action. Uh, so if you've ever had the misfortune to fly to New York City or Chicago uh, or a major city like that, you'll know the painful experience of having to take about an hour long taxi ride to get from the airport to where you actually wanna be. Uh, that's not the case at all with Amtrak. So Amtrak in New York City comes right into Midtown Manhattan. You're literally right next to Madison Square Garden uh, and less than a mile from Times Square and all the action there. Uh, same thing in Chicago. You come right into downtown. You are right just south of the uh, Magnificent Mile with all that shopping and dining and entertainment. Uh, you're also just um, shy of the museum campus with some of those world-class museums there in Chicago. And that is true for Amtrak throughout the US. Uh, in almost every city, it does come right to downtown where you wanna be uh, for sightseeing, uh, dining, and all those attractions. Uh, it even is a great gateway into our national parks, as we'll see in a little while here, uh, particularly Glacier National Park in Montana comes right to the front door, basically, of your lodge where you're gonna stay inside the national park. And Amtrak Vacations really does offer something for everyone, uh, whether you've been dreaming about riding the rails and having your own private sleeping cabin, uh, whether you want to try the made to order steak in the dining car and a lot of the trains, uh, they still do have the chefs on board, you know, preparing meals fresh for you. Uh, it really does have a, a something for everyone, whether it's kids, adults, uh, or anyone in between. Now I do want to get uh, the elephant in the room out of the way pretty early on here. I know that you folks have a lot of questions about safety and things like that at this time. Um, I know it's not maybe your normal uh, time where you'd be planning a vacation. I can tell because I'm speaking to you live from my laundry room. <laughs> I've got a pile of socks that I need to fold and this is all over. Um, but I do want to let you know that you can book with confidence here with Amtrak Vacations because we have a really fantastic flexibility for you. 
Uh, so for new reservations or existing reservations, if you do already have something planned with us, you can actually change your trip right up until five days prior to the departure with no change fees and no cancellation penalties. Uh, so again, whether it's a new trip um, or an existing vacation that you already have planned, you can make any changes you need. You can change the dates, you can change the itinerary. Uh, if you absolutely needed to, of course, you could cancel the trip as well, right up until five days prior to the start date of your vacation. Uh, with no change fees, no penalties, our team are fantastic, you know, helping folks uh, move their trip out to a little later in the summer, in the fall, for some people that had, you know, spring travel booked. So, you can certainly uh, book with confidence here at Amtrak Vacations. And as I go throughout the presentation today, I do want you to keep in mind as well that all of the rail vacations are customizable. Um, so, as I mentioned, we are going to be talking about round trip rail vacations, and a lot of the trips do start from major stations like Chicago or Los Angeles. But as I said, you can certainly start out anywhere else in the country. As I said, there's over 500 Amtrak stations throughout the USA and on up into Canada. So, you can start your trip here on the East Coast, uh, somewhere near Boston, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh. You can start on the West Coast in Sacramento, San Francisco, Oregon. Uh, or anywhere in between. So do keep that in mind throughout the presentation. We can certainly customize any of these trips here to start from a station near you. And we can also customize them to suit your individual interests and needs. Uh, so for example, we're going to talk about our Rails to the Grand Canyon trip a little bit later on in today's presentation. That one spends traditionally two nights in the Grand Canyon. But if you really want to spend some extra time there, we can add extra nights in the middle of the trip at the Grand Canyon. That's no problem. If you're interested in staying at the famous El Tovar Hotel right on the edge of the Grand Canyon, we can make those arrangements for you. Uh, or if you've never been to Los Angeles, the trip ends in Los Angeles. So we can always add a Los Angeles getaway if you want to spend a little bit of time there. Uh, do some sightseeing. We can get you a tour of the city, uh, admission up to the Griffith Observatory, uh, or anything you might be interested there. So do keep that in mind throughout the trip. If there's something that you find interesting, but you want to make some tweaks, we can definitely do that for you. Everything here is customizable. We can add extra nights, extra locations. We can start or end in a different city. We can tailor the sightseeing uh, to your individual interests. If you are afraid of heights, we can drop uh, the Space Needle in Seattle and give you a food tour of Pike's Place Market instead. You know, we can really do whatever you like to make it your perfect vacation. And I do want to address some of the new safety measures uh, and existing safety measures that Amtrak is taking to make sure that you folks do have a comfortable, enjoyable, and memorable vacation for all the right reasons. Uh, so Amtrak is um, having their staff uh, with facial coverings in the stations and on the trains and their connecting bus services. They have absolutely increased their cleaning protocols. So all of the equipment uh, in the stations and on the trains is cleaned and sanitized daily. Uh, in many cases, it's cleaned and sanitized hourly. Uh, they are focusing on the CDC guidelines um, you know, around cleaning and social distancing. So they are focusing on specific things like railings, you know, counters, uh, door handles, everything like that. Of course, they're keeping the restrooms and those facilities uh, spotless on board the train. They are uh, going cashless at this time, uh, just as an extra precaution, um, you know, to minimize the amount of contact. In the stations uh, particularly, and on board the train, uh, but in the stations particularly, they do have social distancing posters and floor stickers to indicate uh, the safe amount of distance to stand apart, particularly in the busier parts of the areas like the um, entrance to the station platforms and things like that. Uh, now with Amtrak, they do have a committed team of over 18,000 employees working together to make sure that you get to your destination safely. And on board the train as well, they are observing social distancing. So, of course, if you do upgrade to a roomette or bedroom, you know, one of the private accommodations on board the train, that is your own private cabin where you can spend your time during your trip. Uh, they've got great big floor to ceiling uh, windows. So if you wanted to, you could spend pretty much the entire journey in your cabin. Uh, we'll see it a little bit later, but they are delivering meals to your cabin as well if you did not prefer to go down to the dining car. Of course, that dining car is still available. 
Uh, and if you are going to be in coach seats on board the train, they are limiting the number of coach seats available to make sure that there are distance in between parties uh, in coach. And now jumping in to the fun stuff here, uh, I do want to look at several of our really popular round trip rail vacations. Now do keep in mind any trip can be a round trip rail vacation. Uh, as I said, we can get you started from your hometown. Uh, in some cases you may connect through a bigger station. In other cases you might be located close to one of the major lines and you can just hop right on and uh, head out. So this particular trip here is called the Northern Rail Experience. And this one is designed for you rail bus. Uh, this one, it really highlights spending that time on board the train and really having that amazing Amtrak uh, train experience. Uh, as you can see, it is a round trip there from Chicago. And one of my favorite things about this particular trip is that it does feature three of Amtrak's most famous and most scenic train routes. Uh, so starting out here, you're going to leave Chicago spend two nights on board the train, uh, headed out to Seattle, that's on the Empire Builder. You'll spend one night in Seattle before taking Amtrak's Coast Starlight train from Seattle down to San Francisco. We have you get out and stretch your legs a little bit there in San Francisco for two nights, and then you take Amtrak's California Zephyr train for two nights back across to Chicago. So as I said, this one does really highlight that rail experience. Uh, certainly though, if you did want to make some extra stops and had some extra time, you could stop off along the way. Uh, Glacier National Park in Montana is fantastic if you wanted to break up that journey on the way out. Or you could stop in Denver and visit Rocky Mountain National Park uh, or Yellowstone National Park somewhere um, in the middle there, taking the California Zephyr home as well. So of course, keep that in mind. Now the first train that I'm going to highlight on this particular route is Amtrak's Empire Builder train. This is a fantastic journey folks. This travels from Chicago uh, through the northern part of the United States. Uh, when you hit Montana it goes through Big Sky Country in Montana and actually goes through uh, the very southern part of Glacier National Park. So you can actually see some of the mountains uh, and everything there from the train. Uh, continues on uh, to Seattle, uh, or you could actually take it to Portland as well. The train splits off and half the train goes to Seattle and half the train goes to Portland, Oregon. Uh, so that's two nights on Amtrak's famous Empire Builder uh, before we have you spend one night there in Seattle. Uh, now, while you're in Seattle, we do include a hop on hop off tour for you. Uh, that hop on hop off tour is a great way to get around and see the city and get some great information and fun facts while you're doing it. Uh, it also means that you don't have to figure out public transportation or uh, take ride shares or taxis anywhere either. So we've got that transportation element covered for you in Seattle. Before you get back on the Amtrak train and take one overnight ride from Seattle down to San Francisco on Amtrak's Coast Starlight. Uh, now you may have heard of the Coast Starlight. It is a really uh, beautiful ride. It's quite uh, famous in train circles anyway. <laughs> uh, it starts in Seattle and actually travels all the way down to Los Angeles. Uh, so this particular trip, the Northern Rail Experience, features the northern half of the Coast Starlight train from Seattle to San Francisco. And it's absolutely gorgeous scenery in that northern half of the route, actually, because you go through the Cascade Mountain Range uh, down through you know, Washington State into Oregon. Uh, actually, when you're crossing over into Oregon, you're crossing the Columbia River. Uh, and you can actually see Mount Hood in the distance, which is really pretty neat. Uh, you do see a lot of other peaks. Um, in that mountain range as well. And one of the neat things is that they do typically stay snow covered uh, even into the warmer months. Uh, so for a lot of the year, you'll see you know beautiful snow capped peaks in the distance on this coast starlight route. So a lot of people think of it and they think of the southern part of the route where you're right along the Pacific Ocean, which is also beautiful. And we'll see that in a trip uh, just a minute here. But this northern half I think is really underrated. Uh, so it's a beautiful ride there from, uh, Seattle down to San Francisco. And now when you get off the train in San Francisco, uh, you do spend two nights there in San Francisco. We have you actually get off the train and uh, stretch your legs for a couple nights. Uh, one of the great features of this is that the sightseeing tour that we include in San Francisco is actually a tour of the Muir Woods, which are the giant redwood trees just outside San Francisco. 
Um, it's a really fantastic experience to see those. And then at the end of the tour, it includes a bay cruise. So I always say that if you come all the way from Chicago over to the Pacific Ocean, you need to actually get out on the water. Um, and you can do that here uh, with this particular trip because it does include a bay cruise, which is really fantastic. Uh, get out on the water, breathe in that fresh salt air, and you get some really great photo opportunities as well of uh, San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge. And then you'll get back on the train uh, and spend two nights on Amtrak's California Zephyr train, which I'm going to tell you about in just a minute on our next trip. Uh, so I don't want to spoil it for you, but the California Zephyr train is absolutely unbelievable. It's one of my, probably is my favorite uh, train ride throughout the U.S. here uh, with Amtrak. Uh, but so this Northern Rail experience uh, starts at 11.49. It does include the three nights hotel accommodations and the five nights on board Amtrak. But of course, as I say, it is customizable, so we could certainly add extra nights in there for you if you like. Um, it does include those hotel accommodations and your sightseeing in both cities where you stop as well. Now, if you're interested in some of these beautiful train routes, but you also want to get spend a little more time off the train uh, doing some sightseeing along the way, uh, this next trip might be one for you. It's absolutely amazing. It's the Grand National Parks with Yellowstone, Yosemite, and the Grand Canyon. Uh, it's a 13-day trip, and I think if you asked anybody um, what are the most popular national parks in the U.S., they would pretty much list exactly these three, <laughs> Yellowstone, Yosemite, and the Grand Canyon. And as we'll see in a minute, there is absolutely a reason that these are the three most popular national parks uh, that we do to work with here uh, with Amtrak Vacations. Uh, so as you can see, this one is a round trip from Chicago as well. Uh, but I definitely want to point out, if you maybe live on the West Coast uh, in California, just because I'm talking about it starting in Chicago doesn't mean you couldn't start it in San Francisco, head down to LA, across to Chicago, and back and end up back in San Francisco. So do keep that in mind throughout. You know, these are customizable. But this one does include, uh, as you can see there, four overnights on board the train uh, and several nights uh, in hotel stays and sightseeing tours of our parks as well. And one of the great features of this trip is that the first couple legs of the trip are on Amtrak's California Zephyr route, which is one of the most scenic train rides, not just in the US, but in all of the world. Uh, it's a really beautiful ride there, folks. Uh, and it's it's amazing because it's really several different and really distinct types of scenery that you see throughout the ride. So the first half of your trip here on the California Zephyr, um, you're going to be traveling uh, from Chicago out to Colorado. Um, you're going to wake up in the morning after your first night on board the train uh, in Colorado pretty early. You're arriving in Denver there. And then the whole rest of that day is just unbelievable sightseeing between Denver and Salt Lake City. You climb up into the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. It's this amazing mountain, beautiful scenery. And then you actually come back down out of the Rocky Mountains. And as you're coming into Utah, you're following the Colorado River, as you can see in the slide here. Um, and you're seeing this amazing red rock kind of canyon scenery uh, right up along the edges of the train. It's really amazing. You get some pretty fantastic pictures there for the rest of the day coming through uh, into Salt Lake City on Amtrak's California Zephyr train. Now, when you arrive in Salt Lake City, we do have you get off the train and spend the night. Uh, Salt Lake City is the jumping off point for Yellowstone National Park, uh, which of course is one of the highlights of this trip as well. Yellowstone National Park is our oldest national park. It's also one of the largest national parks here in the U.S. Uh, it's actually larger than Rhode Island and Delaware combined. Um, so if anybody's from one of those states, your entire state uh, would fit into Yellowstone National Park with room to spare. Uh, so we do have you spend two nights up there, and we do have you do a full day of sightseeing. Uh, now, when you think of Yellowstone National Park, you probably think of Old Faithful Geyser. You will certainly see the Old Faithful Geyser on your tour, uh, but you may not know that um, uh, Yellowstone National Park actually has amazing other uh, geothermal features as well. So not only do they have Old Faithful, they have over 500 geysers in the park. They've also got some amazing hot springs, bubbling mud pots. Um, they've got incredible waterfalls and things like that as well. 
And Yellowstone National Park is known uh, the world over for its wildlife as well. So it is not uncommon for there to be a bison traffic jam. So for you actually to have to pause for a couple minutes in your tour and let the bison cross the road. Uh, you could also see elk, uh, you can see antelope. Uh, if you're very lucky, you could see bear or wolves or even a bald eagle. So certainly keep your eyes peeled on your two days in Yellowstone National Park. After Yellowstone, you hop back on Amtrak's California Zephyr and you complete the route on your way to San Francisco. Uh, this part of the route, I feel like too, doesn't get enough credit, similar to that northern part of the coast starlight, but uh, this part here from Salt Lake City onto San Francisco is absolutely gorgeous because as you're coming into the state of California, you go through the Sierra Nevada mountains. So you've got these towering pine trees. And like I said, it's just a, a beautiful and very different scenery set from the Colorado Rocky Mountains, from the Red Rocks in Utah. So you really see some beautiful changing landscapes uh, throughout this California Zephyr journey. Now we have you spend two nights in San Francisco because San Francisco again is your jumping off point for Yosemite National Park. Uh, Yosemite National Park is actually the third national park uh, that we have here in the U.S., but it actually inspired the national park movement. Uh, John Muir, who the Muir Woods are named for, uh, was a passionate conservationist uh, who actually got the state of California to protect some of the land for Yosemite before it became a national park. It was a state park. Um, Yosemite, of course, is known for its towering granite features like El Capitan and the Half Dome. Uh, it's also known for Yosemite Falls, which you will see on the tour. Uh, Yosemite Falls is one of the tallest waterfalls in the entire world, not just in the United States. Um, and there's some beautiful wildlife and, and other features there in Yosemite National Park as well. So we do have you spend a full day of sightseeing in Yosemite National Park with round trip transfers uh, from San Francisco. So you can sit back and let someone else do the driving and relax a little bit there. Uh, and then you've got hours to explore the park, uh, including a, a guided tour of the park as well. You then from San Francisco will hop on Amtrak's Coast Starlight train uh, down to Los Angeles. Now this is the Southern half of the Coast Starlight route. This is the one that probably most people uh, picture if they've heard of the route, uh, it's certainly featured in the photo here. You do go along huge long stretches of the California coastline and it's absolutely beautiful. You can watch the surfers uh, from the train. It's pretty neat, wave to the people on the beach as you go by. Uh, so it's really pretty neat experience there on that Coast Starlight train. Uh, one of the great parts about the train as well is actually before you hit the coastline, when you're leaving San Francisco, you're going through wine country. Uh, and I feel like that's the perfect time to visit Amtrak's cafe car and grab maybe a glass of local California wine to enjoy while you see the scenery. So I should mention that the Amtrak trains that we're talking about today, all of these long distance trains, the Empire Builder, California Zephyr, the Coast Starlight, these are what are called superliner trains. So they're double decker trains. Pretty much everything from the Mississippi River West <laughs> is a double decker train. Um, on the East Coast, if you're familiar riding the trains on the East Coast, you know, uh, New York, Boston, Washington, those areas, down on into South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, those are one level trains. They're single level trains called view liner trains. So they do, they are a little bit different equipment. Uh, but everything we're looking at today are those beautiful big double-decker trains, uh, which is fantastic because they have what's called the observation car, which has floor-to-ceiling windows where you can see these amazing, stunning views of the coastline. And downstairs from the observation car on the bottom level is the cafe, uh, where you can go in between mealtimes and grab a snack. Uh, they've got, you know, food to order. They've also got some, you know, some great um, beverages in the evening. You could, like I say, grab a glass of wine and enjoy that wine country um, while you're going through California. So that's a great feature of all of these um, long distance trains is the observation car. It's a fantastic place, whether you're in coach or whether you have a roomette or bedroom, you can hang out in that observation car and really take in some of that incredible scenery uh, as you're sitting on the California Zephyr or the Coast Starlight. Uh, now, this trip here does take you to Los Angeles uh, on that Coast Starlight train. You do spend one night in Los Angeles, and of course, while you're there, we don't want you to be bored, so we do include a sightseeing tour of the city as well. 
before you board Amtrak's Southwest Chief Train, which will take you out to Arizona to visit the Grand Canyon. And so as you can see here, this is another double-decker train, the Southwest Chief. Uh, this is a super liner train here. Uh, so you can take that train from Los Angeles out to Arizona bound for the Grand Canyon. And uh, this one's really fantastic as well, folks, because a lot of the, the transfers and things are included here for you. So for example, when your train gets to Arizona, we're actually gonna pick you up at the station uh, and drop you off right at the depot for the Grand Canyon Railway. Now the Grand Canyon Railway, uh, is kind of a, it's a two for one in these Grand Canyon trips because not only do you get to do the Amtrak trains, you also get to do this really beautiful two hour sightseeing train uh, from Williams, Arizona up to the south rim of the Grand Canyon itself. Uh, so it's really fantastic because this train uh, goes through some of the world's largest ponderosa pine forests and it's a lot of fun especially if you've got kids um this green canyon railway train is a lot of fun right before it leaves they have a wild west cowboy show that everybody watches and then the cowboys get on the train and they play music and things while you go up towards the grand canyon and then it's pretty incredible because it will drop you off right inside the Grand Canyon National Park, uh, right at the south rim of the park. And we do have you stay overnight uh, in Grand Canyon National Park on this particular trip. Uh, so it's really quite spectacular. Um, you'll then come back and board the Southwest Chief again and continue on uh, back to uh, Chicago. So as I mentioned, it is a round trip journey there and it does highlight three of America's most incredible national parks, Yellowstone, Yosemite, and the Grand Canyon. And I will talk a little bit more about the Grand Canyon in just a moment. That's our next featured trip as well. Uh, but this one here, it's 13 days, it features those three amazing national parks and also features those three amazing uh, Amtrak train routes as well. So this one is a great one to consider uh, if you folks are interested in the national parks. Uh, and before I do move on to our Grand Canyon centric trip, I do want to point out that we do visit national parks throughout the USA. So if you like these ones, but uh, you really wanted to see Glacier Park in Montana, or you're dying to see some of the Utah parks, we can certainly make that happen for you as well. Um, I only have time to touch on a very select few trips uh, in our broadcast today, uh, but we do visit national parks all over the US. So if that is something that interests you, I think that's gonna be super popular this year with everything going on. I think everybody's gonna wanna get outside stretch their legs once we're finally allowed out, you know, breathe in some really beautiful fresh air and see some of these beautiful national parks. So if you are interested, certainly let us know uh, or call your local travel advisor. They can assist you with these as well. Uh, we have lots of different national park trips. Uh, and we will now talk about one of my favorite national parks, uh, which is the Grand Canyon uh, on this trip, which is called Rails to the Grand Canyon. Uh, as you folks can see, this one's a little bit shorter. Uh, if you can't quite get 13 days off from work or uh, don't quite have that much time to spend, uh, this one's only a five day trip. So it's a little bit more uh, easy for you to do. Uh, it starts out here in Los Angeles with one overnight on the train. You do two nights at the Grand Canyon and then you take the overnight ride back to Los Angeles. So like we said, this is a round trip train uh, experience here. So you start and end in Los Angeles. But as we mentioned way back at the beginning, uh, these are all customizable. So you could add a couple extra nights if you wanted in the Grand Canyon. You could uh, actually continue from the Grand Canyon, you know, further on to New Mexico. Um, train after the Grand Canyon will go to Santa Fe and Albuquerque, places like that. Uh, and if you haven't been to Los Angeles before, we can certainly add some sightseeing on there for you as well. Uh, one of the reasons that I love these Grand Canyon trips is that you know, a lot of the details are taken care of for you. Uh, that's the case with pretty much all of our Amtrak vacations. You know, that's our claim to fame. We'll do the details for you. You sit back and enjoy the trip. Uh, but this one in particular really just kind of connects all the dots perfectly for you. It's also a great trip if you are new to Amtrak uh, and you want to experience it, uh, see how you like it, you're maybe not quite ready to commit to five nights on board the train yet. Uh, there's just two overnights uh, on this trip and they're a little bit shorter. Uh, so it's a really nice experience. You know, you start out the trip at the beautiful Union Station uh, in Los Angeles, 
Now, I should point out, if you folks do look into the roomette or bedrooms, you know, your private cabins on board the train, uh, one of the great features of having those private cabins is that you do have special lounge access. Uh, you are considered first class passengers on board Amtrak. So in a lot of the major stations like Los Angeles and Chicago, uh, there is a special lounge where you can sit and relax before your train. So you'll sit in the lounge maybe uh, there at Union Station in Los Angeles. You board the train in the early evening, uh, get settled in, you know, get cozy in your room or get set up in your coach seats. Uh, and then it's time for dinner. Uh, so you can head down to the dining car or have your meal delivered to your room if you do have a room at or bedroom. After dinner, maybe take a stroll in the lounge car, observe some of that beautiful scenery that you can see here. Uh, have a glass of wine or a beer maybe in the evening and then settle in for bed and you wake up first thing in the morning in Arizona ready to go sightseeing at the Grand Canyon. So it's perfect because it's an overnight ride but it's not uh, too long. It's a great kind of first experience on board Amtrak I think on this one. You do also get that amazing Grand Canyon Railway train as well. So it's going to take you from Williams, Arizona, which is a really neat little town. It's right on historic Route 66. So they've got all kinds of neat dining and memorabilia while you're there. Uh, you then board these Grand Canyon Railway train, as you can see here, and head straight up to the south rim uh, of the canyon itself. So as I mentioned, we'll pick you up at the Amtrak station bring you to the depot for the Grand Canyon Railway train. It does include breakfast before this train departs. That's included here for you. Now, when this train arrives in the Grand Canyon, uh, you're going to disembark the train, and we've got a sightseeing tour ready to go. It's going to pick you up right there at the depot uh, and take you out to some absolutely amazing viewpoints where you can get stunning photos like these. Uh, now, the guides on these tours of the Grand Canyon are fantastic, folks. Um, I've done this one myself, so I can speak from experience. These guides are really amazing. You know, they're going to tell you all about how the canyon was formed, its significance to the native peoples, and pretty much everything you could ever want to know. Um, when this tour is over, they are going to drop you off at the lodge where you stay overnight um, in the Grand Canyon for those two nights. And I can't emphasize enough how amazing it is to actually stay inside our national parks. Uh, so the Grand Canyon trip here is inside the national park. Uh, Glacier National Park, which we're gonna see in just a minute, you stay inside the national parks. It's such a great opportunity to be right there in the center of the action. Uh, you know, you can watch the sunset in Grand Canyon, Grand Canyon National Park uh, before turning in for the night. If you're an early riser, I can't recommend enough getting up early, uh, taking one of the sunset hikes and seeing the sun rise over the Grand Canyon. It's absolutely spectacular. And it's so easy to do because you're staying right there just steps away from the rim itself. So this uh, Rails to the Grand Canyon trip here, folks, this does include the round trip rail accommodations on board Amtrak from Los Angeles, the two nights uh, at the historic National Park Lodge inside the National Park, along with your tour, a couple meals there for you, uh, and your round trip on the Grand Canyon Railway, the steam engine train there that you saw that goes through the Ponderosa Pine Forests right up into the canyon itself. Now, if you are interested in uh, a little bit of a different type of vacation. We do have a really nice one here for you, the Amtrak uh, Niagara Falls Ultimate Getaway Round Trip from Chicago. Uh, so this one's fantastic. It's another shorter trip here for you. It's three nights in Niagara Falls and two overnight rides on board Amtrak. Uh, and one of the fantastic things about it is that this trip here is jam-packed with sightseeing opportunities. So you, while you're up there in Niagara Falls for those three nights, uh, you have the Niagara Adventure Pass, which is going to get you admission to uh, the boat ride, as you can see in the photo there, out to the base of the falls. So you can put on your poncho and get a little bit wet there. <laughs> you also have admission to the Skyline Tower observation deck, so you can get a bird's eye view of the falls, as well as several other different attractions up there in Niagara Falls. Now, we make this one really easy for you as well. We're actually going to pick you up at the Amtrak station and drop you off at your hotel there in Niagara Falls. And while you're in Niagara Falls, you do have a pass in the local shuttle system that can take you all around. It's also pretty easy walking distance uh, to many of the attractions up there at Niagara Falls as well. And then we'll pick you up at the hotel and bring you back to the Amtrak station for your ride on the Lakeshore Limited train uh, back to Chicago. 
Uh, Niagara Falls is a fantastic uh, destination, folks. You can also get there from the East Coast as well. So if you're located in uh, New York, you can hop in from New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, New York to New York City and take the train up to Niagara Falls from New York as well. Now, you can't really talk about Amtrak vacations without at least mentioning Glacier National Park, which is absolutely one of the most amazing places in the U.S. that you can visit. Uh, Glacier National Park is located in Montana, so it's on that Empire Builder route that we saw back in the beginning on the Northern Rail Experience. Uh, just to tell you, Na Glacier National Park is seasonal. It's only open uh, pretty much in the summer months. It starts up at the beginning of June, typically, uh, and stays open through the middle of September. And yet, even though it's open for such a short amount of time, Glacier National Park is one of the best-selling destinations that we do offer here with Amtrak Vacations. And the reason for that is that it is so easy to get to uh, by train and kind of tricky to get to any other way. So if you wanted to fly uh, into Glacier National Park, you'd almost certainly be changing planes and then doing a pretty decent drive after the fact. Uh, but the Amtrak train actually brings you right to the front doorstep of the Glacier Park Lodge, which is, again, a beautiful, historic National Park Lodge with towering, um, you know, soaring trees and, and everything there at Glacier National Park Lodge. Uh, and it's actually located only 206 steps from the train station. So one of my colleagues has been recently and counted it out for us. 206 steps from the train station to the National Park Lodge. So it drops you off really right in the heart of Glacier National Park. Uh, now this trip does feature the Big Sky Circle Tour, which will take you on the Going to the Sun Road. It's a bit of a funny name, but it's a very famous road uh, which travels all through the park. It makes one giant loop throughout the park. Uh, you do cross the Continental Divide, which is pretty neat, and see some amazing cascading waterfalls and glaciers, of course, along the trip. Glacier National Park does have 26 uh, glaciers there in the park at the moment. You also uh, typically do a boat cruise there with the Glacier Park Getaway as well. Uh, and that's three nights accommodations. And you can take this round trip, again, from your hometown. Uh, it is located on the Empire Builder route. So if you're located already on that route, easy peasy. If you live in um, you know, Minneapolis or North Dakota, Wisconsin, anywhere like that, you can hop on the Empire Builder. Um, if you don't happen to live along the route, we make it again very easy for you to connect through your hometown. Um, so you could connect you know, from the East Coast if you're located uh, near Boston or Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, you connect through Chicago uh, onto the Empire Builder uh, and stop at Glacier National Park. Seattle is another really popular getaway. Uh, so you can do you know, these short trips as well. It doesn't have to be these 13 <laughs> night, two week long vacations. You can do Seattle getaway here, which is just two nights accommodations there in Seattle with admission to the Space Needle and the Glass Gardens, as well as a sightseeing tour there. And again, we can have you take this trip from Sacramento, from Portland, Anywhere in Southern California, you can take the Coast Starlight up to Seattle. Uh, anywhere from uh, out west or east going west to Seattle, you can hop on that Empire Builder train. Uh, so we can get you there a lot of different ways, you know, from your hometown. It's quite easy to do. You can also combine Glacier Park and Seattle uh, as they're both on the Empire Builder route. It's a really easy one to kind of make a combo, customize a combo trip there. Glacier Park and Seattle is a lot of fun. And from Seattle, you can actually head up into Canada as well. So you can take the train up to Vancouver and then take the cross Canada train, um, you know, as well. So there's a lot of different options here for you. And as I mentioned, you certainly can customize the trips uh, to be something that works for you. So, for example, we have many different types of hotels, uh, three star, four star and five star options for you. So we can set up some place that's clean and comfortable to use as a base while you're out exploring. Uh, or if you're more the kind of person that wants to head to the hotel and really have a beautiful, relaxing experience, maybe get a spa treatment, uh, go down to the sauna, have a beautiful meal in a nice restaurant right in your hotel, we can set that up for you as well. Uh, the great thing about all of our hotel locations are that they are fantastically located. Uh, so all of our hotels are, you know, that you can choose from are vetted by us and they are right downtown you know, right near the sightseeing or right near the trains or in a lot of cases, both. Uh, and again, 
that's true for the national parks as well. So you can step off the train uh, and this is a view here of Glacier National Park Lodge. You're about 200 steps away from the entrance uh, there from the train station to Glacier National Park. Uh, same is true, you know, like I say, with the Grand Canyon, we make that very easy. We facilitate those transfers for you. Um, Yellowstone, Yosemite, those those parks as well. So certainly do let us know. We can make any customizations that you need to make this the perfect vacation for you. Now, one of the things that I do get asked quite a bit uh, regarding Amtrak is how do I pack for the train? Um, Amtrak does have a very generous uh, luggage allowance, so you can bring on two free carry-on bags per person. You also get two checked bags for free. Uh, if your stations do accommodate checked baggage, some of the very small stations don't have checked baggage available, but usually there would be one nearby you that would have checked baggage. Certainly every place we've talked about today, Chicago, Seattle, Los Angeles, Grand Canyon, you know, all those places do have checked baggage available. Uh, now, if you are going to be checking bags, luggage can be checked 45 minutes prior to departure. So I always recommend that you get to the station at least an hour early, just to give you enough time to uh, you know, get the lay of the land, find the check-in desk and check those bags. If you're not going to be checking bags, if you're doing a little bit of a shorter trip, uh, you can get to the station a little bit later, you know, 45 minutes to a half an hour before your departure. Um, now do keep in mind, if you are checking baggage, uh, you will check it in at your starting station and you won't see it again until you arrive at your first destination. Uh, so for example, if you're going to, let's say, go from Philadelphia to Glacier National Park, uh, you'll check in that bag in Philadelphia, and you won't see it again for two days until you arrive in Glacier National Park. Uh, so you do want to make sure that you do bring anything that you need on board the train with you in a carry-on bag. So pajamas, uh, your toothbrush, that's when people miss all the time, your phone chargers, um, obviously any uh, entertainment there, a deck of cards, a book, anything like that. You can also bring snacks on board the train. Uh, so you can bring your own snacks and drinks. Uh, the only thing is if you were gonna bring, you know, a bottle of wine to enjoy in the evening, you'd wanna do that in the privacy of your own uh, cabin. Uh, which does bring me to the accommodations on board the train. Amtrak does have several different types of accommodations. Uh, so the first, of course, is the coach seating. Now, I don't really like the word coach because I do think it makes people think of, um, you know, airplanes and uh, middle seats and no leg room. Uh, but as you can see, that is not the case on board Amtrak. So Amtrak does have no middle seats whatsoever. It's just two seats, the aisle, and then two more seats. As you can see, the legroom is extremely generous. Uh, the seats do recline back quite far, about 45 degrees, and they do have a little footrest that comes up. You have storage overhead for luggage. You also have storage at the front of the car if you did have a little bit of a bigger bag or didn't feel comfortable putting it over your head yourself. Uh, the great thing too is with Coach, you get those big beautiful picture windows and you also have outlets at your seat so you can charge your phone or tablet or any other device you might have with you. But if you are gonna be doing overnights on board the train, especially multiple overnights on board the train, I really always do recommend that you at least look at the sleeping accommodations on board Amtrak. So there are two main types of cabins on board Amtrak. The first is called the roomette, which you can see here. Uh, it's designed for one or two people. Uh, it's got daytime seating that converts down into beds, uh, bunk beds. So those two seats that you see there will fold down into the bottom bunk and the top bunk will fold out from the wall. Um, as you can see, she's got a big, beautiful picture window there. Uh, there is a tray table that you can fold out to put a laptop on, or if you wanted to eat a meal or play some cards. Uh, there's also climate controls in the room as well, uh, along with outlets and things like that, uh, light switches and, and that sort of thing. Um, with the roomettes, the restrooms and showers are just down the hall. But the great thing about that is that you are not sharing those facilities with the entire train. You're only sharing them with the other folks who have a roomette in your exact sleeper car. And with the roomettes or bedrooms, any of the sleeping accommodations on board the train, you do have assistance from a sleeper car attendant. Now, he or she uh, is fantastic, I can already tell you. Um, my favorite people that I've met throughout my journeys on board Amtrak's have largely been the sleeper car attendants. They're just so fantastic and fun and passionate about their jobs. Um, now, these are the folks who will change your chairs down into beds at night. Uh, they're also going to change your beds back into chairs when you wake up in the morning. 
the sleeper car attendants are also in charge of keeping those facilities nice and clean for you. So they are, you know, quite frequently cleaning in the common areas, including the restrooms and showers. So I've never had any kind of trouble using those shared facilities on board Amtrak. Um, the sleeper car attendants will also assist uh, in making any dining reservations, and they can also uh, tell you where you are on board the train. So if there's something of interest out the window, they can often point out, you know, what you're looking at, which is really fantastic. Now, whether you have a roomette or a bedroom, uh, the private accommodations do have your own private door, so you can close your door and sit back and relax away from the world uh, in your own private cabin, as you can see there. They've also got privacy curtains you can draw across as well. They're quite thick and uh, they've got the Velcro on the side so you can block out all the lights in the evening to sleep. Just another view of the roomette here. Uh, one thing I always recommend too for folks, uh, if you are traveling as a larger group, like a party of four, uh, you can definitely get two roomettes. And if you book early enough, we can arrange to have them across the hall from each other. You can actually pretty much have a chat with those folks in the roomette across the hall from you pretty easily. Uh, and if you are traveling as a larger party, you can eat together uh, in the dining car and you can also spend time together in the observation car as well. One of the great perks of having a roomette or a bedroom is that uh, sleeper car passengers do board the train separately. So you get kind of a priority boarding experience with those sleeper accommodations. As I mentioned before too, if you are in a bigger station like Chicago or LA, you have your own lounge to wait in. They'll then escort you down to the train separately and you get to board the train first and get all settled in kind of separate from the crowds. Um, so it's another great feature, especially with especially with the social distancing you know, mandates right now, it's, it's nice to be able to have those private accommodations uh, to be able to board separately uh, and things like that. Now, as I mentioned, the roomette is fantastic. Uh, it's a great value, but if you are looking for a little bit more room or a little bit more private facilities, you may want to look at the bedroom accommodations. Those are the larger types of cabins on board the train. Uh, as you can see here, it does basically have like a little love seat as well as a freestanding chair. So you can sit across from each other or you can sit next to each other on the love seat. Again, you've got the great big picture windows and the tray table. And again, it will turn into bunk beds in the evening. Uh, the difference here is that the bottom bunk is a little bit wider. So you could sleep two adults and a child uh, in the bedroom if you like. Um, so it does fit two adults or potentially two adults and one child. Uh, so it's going to be, again, the lower bunk that's a little bit wider and then a top bunk that folds out from the wall. And you don't have to, again, worry about setting those up for you. The sleeper car attendant will set those up uh, in the evening and turn them back into chairs for you in the daytime. And the great thing about the bedroom is that you do actually have private facilities with the bedroom on board Amtrak. You have your own sink as well as your own little toilet and shower stall uh, in the room with you. So it is a private facilities there with those bedrooms. Just another view of the bedroom here. As you can see, they're having a nice uh, little glass of wine in the evening in their bedroom. And I should mention that with the bedrooms or roomettes, uh, your dining on board the train is included for you. So all of the meals uh, while you're on board the train, if you have a roomette or bedroom, are included for you. Um, now you can go down to the dining car if you'd like to sit there. Uh, or if you prefer, you can actually have those meals delivered and enjoy them in the privacy of your own sleeper cabin. So you can make the arrangements with your sleeper car attendant, order your dinner from the menu, uh, set it up to get delivered at a specific time, like six o'clock, and they'll actually bring the nice piping hot meals right down to you uh, in your private cabin. Now, all of the trains that we've looked at today, the Empire Builder, Southwest Chief, Coast Starlight, California Zephyr. Uh, as I mentioned, all of these are double-decker trains. They're the uh, long-distance routes. And for the majority of these routes, they do have uh, made-to-order meals on board the train, which is really fantastic. Um, so you can order your steak medium and actually get it medium. Um, so that's on these long distance routes. Some of the shorter train routes have a little bit of a more limited menu, but they still do have, uh, you know, fresh and hot food. Uh, but all these long distance trains out to the parks typically will have fresh prepared meals right on board the train for you. Now with Amtrak, they do have some fantastic discounts. Uh, so you, if you are eligible, they've got discounts available for children, seniors, active duty military, as well as veterans. 
And as a special thank you just for joining us here today, we've got a really fantastic offer. If you are interested, pardon me, if you are interested in one of the sleeping accommodations, the roomettes or the bedrooms on board the train, uh, you can save $100 per booking. Uh, if you give us this code when you call us or your local travel advisor, uh, give that code UPGRADE100 and you can save $100 off your booking if you do upgrade to the roomette or a bedroom. Uh, of course, that is if you book by May 26, you just want to give us this code here. Again, it's UPGRADE100. And I know that uh, that does mean that you do need to book by May 26, but just to remind you, we do have that maximum flexibility with any of your reservations. You can make any changes to the itinerary, to your dates, to anything you need, right up until five days prior to your departure with no change fees and no cancellation penalties. So whenever you folks are ready, uh, we are standing by and ready to help. Uh, great collage here with a lot of my friends and colleagues. Uh, we are all working from home right now. Uh, everybody's in their kitchen or their dining room. Uh, you know, their kids are getting into the action. Their pets are getting into the action. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, though, please do let us know. Uh, we are standing by and ready to help. And if you had fun today and are interested, in a couple more topics, we've got some other great upcoming presentations here for Grand Canyon and Glacier Park next week. Uh, some great overnight train travel trips, uh, the 26th and 27th. And then our top five scenic rail journeys uh, will be the topic on June 3rd. So I do have a little bit of time here. I'm going to get to as many questions as I can. Uh, as I mentioned, if I don't have time to address your question, we will make sure that somebody does reach out to you. Uh, and get those answers that you need. Uh, so please do type away any questions uh, in that questions box. Don't forget to download the free handouts. And I just do have a question for you uh, before I get started here, which is what rail vacations are you interested in and when are you interested in travel? All right, perfect. So I do see that I have a lot of questions rolling in here. So let me just grab a few that I can answer um, here on today's broadcast. Uh, so I see that there's a great question here uh, from Judy, who would like to know about the handicapped accessible rooms on board the train. Uh, so great question, Judy. So those handicapped accessible rooms, there is a handicapped accessible room, at least one, if not more, oftentimes more, uh, available on each departure. Uh, of the long distance trains. There's also handicapped accessible seating uh, in coach seating as well, if you were just gonna be doing a shorter trip. Now, during uh, your time at the train station, all of the major stations will also have a service called Red Cap Service available, which can help you move around the station and also assist you with your luggage. So that's called Red Cap Service. It is available there in the stations. And then the handicapped, handicapped accessible room on board the train uh, is designed to accommodate a wheelchair so you could stay uh, in the wheelchair or transfer to the seating. Um, it does have its own private restroom and then the shower just outside the room uh, is accessible as well and certainly you could have the meals delivered to your room uh, with the accessible room. Uh, so if you do have any other questions, you know, specific questions about that, just give us a call or call your local travel agent and we'll be certainly able to tell you about the different routes and the different configurations. It does vary a little bit, you know, by train. All right, so I've got a great question here um, from Joseph, who's interested in the dining car. Uh, and he wants to know about uh, the meals in the dining car uh, and if they do have vegetarian meals available. Uh, so they do, Joseph, have vegetarian meals available in the dining car. So they always will have a vegetarian meal available as well as a kosher meal. And then for any other dietary restrictions uh, like uh, low carb or low sodium, uh, just let your server know and they can point you in the right direction, you know, as far as uh, what will be a good uh, choice for you there. Uh, certainly in any of the larger trains where they do have the, you know, facilities on board there, uh, they could potentially modify the meal for you as well, like to leave the bun off the hamburger, uh, that kind of thing. 
A uh, great question here from Marianne, who wants to know if a person with a guide's dog can travel on board the train. Uh, absolutely, Marianne, that's no trouble at all. If you do have a, an assistance uh, dog, you would just want to let us know. They'll ask you a couple questions about the size of the dog and things like that uh, when you make the, the reservation. But certainly, of course, that's no trouble at all. I've got a question here from Jim, uh, who wants to know about changing the stations with luggage. Uh, so it's a great question, Jim. So as I mentioned, uh, when you check in your bag, uh, it is checked in all the way through your to your destination. So let's say you're going to go from Boston to Glacier National Park. Uh, now you need to change trains in Chicago uh, in order to make that work, but you can check your bag in Boston, uh, and they will change it for you. So any checked baggage will get changed for you. You don't have to go pick it up and bring it to your next train. Uh, you would have to bring your own bag, uh, you know, your little carry-on where you put your pajamas and your toothbrush. That bag you're responsible for transferring from one train to another. Uh, but the great thing is if you did have the sleeper accommodations, uh, you could sit and relax in the lounge in the Chicago station uh, and you could basically leave your bags there with them and go out and grab a piece of pizza something like that grab a slice of deep dish pizza in Chicago um, and they'll hold on to the bags for you and as well you can get assistance with those bags in the station if you do need assistance with your carry-on in all the major stations they uh, do have it available there called the red cap service uh, so I am sorry, I do see there's a lot more questions and I just don't have time. We're already <laughs> a little bit over here. Uh, but as I said, I will make sure that somebody from the team reaches out to give you folks uh, the answers to those questions. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to spend with us uh, here at Amtrak Vacations. And I just want to say thank you and have a wonderful rest of your day.